Hi, in this video we are going to try a few regression techniques that are available from within ArcGIS. Uh, more specifically we're going to look for the ordinary least square and the geographically weighted regressions and we're also going to do a spatial autocorrelation of the uh, OLS results to see if we got any sort of clustering of error terms. But before we do anything, let's look at the data. We've got two different sort of layers in this file. We've got the POP10 Pro, which is a random selection of individuals of the city of Uppsala, or the municipality of Uppsala. And these are the variables. We've got age, age square. We've got the share of females at any location. We've got the log disposable income. Uh, we've got born in Sweden, uh, or for one, for, for being born in Sweden and zero for not being born in Sweden. And we've got a count variable that indicates the number of individuals living at any location. And keep in mind, this is a sort of a fraction. So when it says one, it's not because it's the only single individual that lives in the area, but rather the only one selected from in the random uh, material. So there should be no possibility to actually find out who it is and, and what location and time. Right, so that's the data and if we go beyond we could see the uh, the lines, the, the polygons indicating the sort of the looks of the urban area surrounding uh, in, being in the municipality and this of course the big one is the Uppsala municipal municipality itself which consists of roughly 160,000 inhabitants nowadays but this is data from farther back in time. Wow. So let's go for the regressions. We start with an ordinary least square regression. I double click the OLS and this is not an introduction to the regression techniques themselves but rather how to conduct them in from within the ArcGIS framework. So for any study of what is an ordinary least square please go to another video or something. Uh, I'm going to use the POP10 Pro which is the dot file uh, point file which also it contains the individual values. We need in this case also to tell the model if what kinds of, of things are uniquely for one individual. And I've done that in the case variable where each case has got a specific number that corresponds to that specific individual or in fact location because it's weighted material. The dependent variable would be the log disposable income and I'll try a few variables. I'll go for age, I'll go for age square and I'll try for female share and I'm going to do the born in Sweden. I will satisfy that and I'll also satisfy myself with the sort of output feature class location. Of course when you're doing it yourself you should of course probably do more settings but this is this is not that kind of a study. So I'm going to go for OK. And relatively quickly afterwards, we will have the results that we can find in the uh, in, in the geoprocessing format, but also as, as a separate standalone, uh, standalone file. So if I go first to look for the results, and I go to the results section, and I go to the ordinary least square, I see in the messages here, which is kind of not very easy to read, but nevertheless, that we've got a positive age corresponding to, to income, so age increases income. Uh, squared age is negative, which means that at some location, at some time, when you become very old, the incomes tend to decrease again. Females are in fact positively correlated with income, which is perhaps inverse to what we know from all kinds of literature. But then again, this is a random selection, but also OLS from a, in a spatial materials, so there's a lot of things missing. Being born in Sweden is positively correlating with greater income. So that's also a fairly expected value. We can now look for the for the variable outcomes in terms of standard residuals where they are showing us with red colors that it's, it's beyond or more positive in terms of income compared to the average. And the blue ones would be the opposite, the lower incomes. We could just see by looking that there are higher incomes in the urban areas and well, at some locations at least, relatively uh, much poorer individuals living in the rural outskirts. If we want to test the, this results, we wouldn't look for the predicted values because in fact, in reality, in real world, wealthy people and poor people are living at different locations. But if we have a model that fails to explain that spatial pattern, we're going to 
continue having a spatial clustering of values also in the residuals, which means that the the residuals, which is the difference between what we thought will be predicted and will be observed, still is so much space in it that we in fact needed more variables to start explaining the variation and, and not until we've got um, sort of er eradicated the, the clustering we've got a model that takes care at least sort of what we think of the spatial autocorrelation. Within the, the spatial autocorrelation I'm going to run for the global measurement of spatial autocorrelation Moran's I is, is found in the st spatial statistics tool analyzing patterns and I double click on the spatial autocorrelation by the way, the ordinary least square was found in the same sort of main box, st spatial statistics tool, but under the modeling spatial relationships sub box. But now to spatial autocorrelation. I double click and I now choose the ordinary least square variable. The input field would be the residual, and that everything else is being the um, sort of the, the default values. And I click generate report and OK. And after a few moments, we get a result which is not being illustrated unless we go to the geoprocessing results section where we again could see, let me see, sorry, this is not where we wanted to go. We wanted to go minimize the OLS messages and go to the spatial autocorrelation where we could see that we do have spatial autocorrelation. We've got 0 0.04 and a Z score that is beyond, if you remember your Z score tables and see the number of cases you would recognize this as being sort of significant you can also see that from the p-value we can get it confirmed for us by double clicking on and we asked also for the report for a very pedagogical thing that ArcMap did when they were Esri did when they run this kind of report system where you see the distribution what we are thinking and uh, all that is being yellow would it be considered to be sort of random but we do see that we have a clustered value so we can get easy understanding of what we have. So I'm going to minimize that window. Um, the next thing we can do is to choose another kind of geographical model. The OLS is looking for the global population, everyone living in the city. If we go for the geographically weighted regression instead, it will look for each individual and would create unique neighborhoods that we either could determine or let the model choose itself. So it looks for the relationship among the closest one and run a regression taking into account all the local varieties. So by doing this instead, we double click geographically weighted and I can fill you in on what we are doing. So I'm going to go to the original POP10 Pro. The dependent variable would again be the log disp income and the explanatory variables would be the same with one uh, change. It doesn't work on h square mean when I've been testing it before. It might be that the values are too big or something else. It's beyond my understanding of it, but it's actually a, an error in the, in the model execution. The female works well and uh, Born in Sweden works well, so I can use those. I use the output as predicted or, or determined before. The kernel type specifies the space in which the, sort of the, the, the neighbors are being studied. We either have a fix, which means that you got a fixed repetition of the meters or kilometers from each point to all its neighbors. So if you've got one location and you look for everything within one kilometer, you will do that regardless of how many cases you've got. The other one would be to have an adaptive one, though you look for rather sort of uh, a K nearest neighbor approach where you let the, um, uh, the, the, the nearest neighbors be determined by when you find them. In fact, so you can either have a fixed kernel or adaptive. I'm going to go for the simplest of them all, having the fixed one. How big this distance would be, or how many individuals and neighbors you should have, is something that's being tested in the bandwidth methods uh, being defined in the AIC, which is ICAC information criterion. Again, this is something that is being tested from within the model, and we're going to let it be the default. We can also weight it by the number of individuals that live in each of the dots, and I think that's a ch uh, very good idea, so I'm going to go for count, so we take that into account as well. When I now press OK, the regression is being redone, but now it, rather than having a global watch and global regression for the model, it's going to do it from any location, taking into account its neighbors and then moving on to the next one. So all of these, almost a thousand locations, will have their own regressions being regressed for them. 
the new results that comes up on top now uh, let me see is relatively similar if I uncheck this one and we see the other ones beneath we see that we got a differentiation of the colors but it's not tremendously diff uh, different however if we look for the values that come up if we are using the symbology we could see that for instance the predicted values that's literally what we got is this we go for we go for the uh, the coefficient for each this turned out to be the geographical distribution we could see much clearly that the age was stronger or more positive in the in the city areas and more negative if you want in the more remote areas and this is the way the variables goes on and the determinants of them so we could see it for all these we can also look for the residuals and this is what they look again a relatively much more sort of distributed pattern so so far without going into detail what we get this is the what we were hoping to have as a result just looking for how these two different kinds of variables are producing their values it's just kind of one more thing to do and that's to go to the results section and look for the results and in fact we do have let me see if we can get any messages here showing that we've got an r2 of roughly uh, 30 percent if you look for the uh, adjusted ones and that would be a, a test a, a, a setting up a global value for all the local regressions and this is literally what we explained for the full data set so we also here can have some kind of a aggregated information of what we've got so this would be the end of phase number one in the second part of this video series we're going to interpolate values from the regressions and just look at how they look.